What is going on YouTube and welcome back to the JJW Sports Talk Show where everyone is welcome. And today we are going to be going through every single game from Sunday to Monday night football. You know, what a crazy week. You know, so many upsets, so many just crazy things just happening, you know. The Fal you know, the Saints choking game to the Falcons, which is usually the other way around. You have the Jaguars upsetting the Bills, you have the Raiders losing to the Giants, the Browns absolutely putting a beating on the Bengals, you have the Ravens coming back down 14 not into the Vikings. Broncos absolutely killed the Cowboys, and the Cowboys have 16 points because the Broncos pulled all their starters by the time they're up 27 nothing. So that's nothing to worry about there. Dolphins get their first win in a while. Chargers beat the Eagles. Chiefs barely beat the Packers with Jordan Love, and Jordan Love did not look good at all. And the Arizona Cardinals, with all the injuries, they still find a way to beat a 49ers team, a very well-coached 49ers team. The Titans get a huge upset win over the Rams without Derrick Henry. They've shown they can be a great team without Henry. And then the Bears and the Steelers. The Steelers almost choke a game to the Bears. So, let's get into talking, to, talking about these games. Not going to be here for forever, but, you know, we're, we're, we're going to talk about some games a little bit. So, first one, you have the Raiders and the Giants. You know, a game that the Raiders should have won. But, you know, this Giants team showed up, and this Raiders team wasn't ready. That is unacceptable when you're coming off a bye week and you're not ready, you know, you're not executing. You come off a bye week, you have a whole week to prepare, a whole extra week to get ready for your next opponent. In the last four or five years, the Raiders have not done that. Post their bye week, the Raiders have been absolutely terrible. You know, a lot of distractions, yeah. But even before this year, without the distractions, it was still bad. Now, this year with the distractions, it's probably only going to be worse. You know, they've lost so many good players. Henry Ruggs was a good player, but what he did was unacceptable. So, the Giants, you know, the Giants played, you know, give credit to the Giants. They played their freaking hearts out, and it showed. And it shows on the scoreboard. Jones has been playing decent the last few weeks. Not great. Not great but decent, slash okay. He's been getting it done. You know, Devontae Poker has been a really good back. Giants defense is starting to figure some things out. This Giants team could be a, a, a team that emerges from the we, from the weeds late, late on in the year. You know, we see it every year. There's always one or two teams that do this, and the Giants may be one of those teams. So, yeah, Giants beat the Raiders 23-16 to in a game where the Raiders should have won. That's the NFL. Should've, would've, could've. If you don't come in prepared, if you don't come in and play your heart out, if you don't come in and play hard, you're not going to win. That's the NFL. Then you have the Falcons at the Saints. You know, what a game. What a freaking game. It really looked like that the Saints were going to take this one over the Falcons, and I thought they were. You know, I even picked the Saints to beat the Falcons. He, he, you know, even with their back quarterback, you know, because Sean Payton and that coaching staff for the Saints always finds a way to get someone or, who, you know, whoever the quarterback is going to start that week, they always find a way to get him ready. Trevor Simeon was ready, but his wide receivers were not. Callaway and, you know, their guys just couldn't hold on to the ball. You know, there's only so much you, so much you could blame on the quarterback when your receivers aren't even catching the ball. So, you know, what a game by the Falcons. Great game by the Falcons. Really nice comeback, you know, and, and this Saints team has got to get something going here. You know, Jameis Winston is out the rest of the year. Got to figure something out. These receivers have to help him out, too, and Michael Thomas isn't even in either. So, got to get something figured out there. So, I guess we'll see what goes on. Great game by the Falcons. Played really hard without Calvin Ridley. Even though Pitts did drop a pass right early in the game like that, kind of sucked. Nonetheless, they they come out to win at the end of the fourth quarter when the clock hits triple zeros, and that's all that matters. So, the Falcons beat the Saints 27-25. to Matt Ryan... Russell Gage, and they get the job done. Arthur Smith, they get the job done. Then the next game, what a surprise between the Bills and the Jags. Jags take that game 9-6. to six. You know, this, this Bills team has some things to worry about. You know, since that Titans they, game, they just have not, have not been the same. They struggled versus the Dolphins through the first half. Kind of, kind of pulled away a little bit in the second, kind of. And then they lose here to the Jacksonville Jaguars, who haven't won a game on Amer on America's soil in the United States, like over 400 and some days, and they beat the Bills. 
Like, what? What? The Bills are just so inconsistent on offense. Their offensive line is not very good. I'm not thrilled with the offensive line. I'm not thrilled with the running backs. And, you know, the defense is very good. It's the highest scoring defense in the league. It's it's one of the best, if not the best, defenses. But they just got to figure something out, man. I don't know what it is. You know, before the season started, I kind of had my doubts with the Bills just because they didn't change very much coming into the year. You know, when you don't change much, teams tend to figure you out. Teams tend to tend to figure that out. You know, maybe that's what's happening here. Maybe the teams are figuring out a way to get to Josh Allen, ways that Josh Allen is struggling, because that's what is happening. You know, Josh Allen did have a bad game, and, and, you know, that happens. Every quarterback has that type of game. But the offensive line has to get something figured out. The run game has to get something figured out. Zach Moss and Mike Singletary are not up to the challenge every week. You know, they, they're they not consistent enough. And you need consistency in that backfield. And they do not have it. Running backs aren't hard to find. Don't be scared to drop them or trade them or go draft someone. Running backs are not hard to find. And the offensive line needs to get figured out as well. Defense, I have no issues with. Defense has so many playmakers, they're fine. Like a Hyde, Poyer, White, um, Milano, Edmonds. You know, I think Levi Wallace is one of the most underrated corners in the league, and one of the most underrated defensive players in the league. Maybe underrated players in the league in general. So yeah, Bills better get something figured out. You know, they have the Jets next week. They better get it figured out versus the Jets. Then, then you have the the you know Cleveland Browns absolutely killed the Cincinnati Bengals, forty-one to sixteen. This Bengals team, man, you know, that first drive, they drive down the field. They look, they look like they're going to score a touchdown or at least a field goal. They're going to get some, something out of it, and they just don't. You know, that that was that's what set the tone right there. That pick six, that Denzel Ward pick six, that set the tone. And this Bengals team was so turnover happy after that. When you have so many turnovers, like, what was it, like four, five, maybe six? You're not going to win those games. You are not going to win those games. You have to win the turnover matchup. You know that Bengals defense is better than this. But the offense didn't help them. The offense didn't have a very good game. That offensive line of the Bengals is not performing very well. That's what that's their biggest downfall right now. You know, the defense is in. You know, it struggled this past week. Granted, they didn't get much help, but they struggled. Offensive line, not very good. Joe Mixon is good. But it's difficult to run when you don't have anywhere to run when you don't have an offensive line blocking for you. So, kind of sucks there, but the Browns, give credit to the Browns. That defense showed up. This Browns team showed up, you know. And, of course, figures the run game gets going and Baker Mayfield gets going. Better hope that run game stays healthy because this Browns team isn't very much without them. They, they really struggle. Yeah, they did have so many injuries. I get it. But Baker Mayfield has to put that team on his shoulders when the run game isn't going, when anything else isn't going. None, you know, nonetheless, really, really good win by the Browns. Really good defensive performance. So, 41-16, Bengals better get get something figured out by next week. You know, the Bengals are starting to look like good old Bengals that we know. So, I guess we'll see if they can figure it out or not. Then you have the New England Patriots at the Carolina Panthers. 24-6, Patriots won. To be honest, I was expecting this one. I did not think that the Panthers were going to win this game. I didn't think it was really going to be close either. You know, there, the, the, you know, there were people who thought it was going to be closer than I did. But look at that New England defense. You got Sam Darnold not playing very good. Bill Belichick knows how to play Sam Darnold ab- absolutely perfectly. Just like any other quarterback, basically, that's young. A rookie quarterback mainly. So, you know, they made that Panthers team one-dimensional. On offense, and you know, you, you, when they become one dimensional, it's not very good. When any time team becomes one dimensional, usually it's not very good. So Mac Jones had had himself a day. <sighs> Patriots offense looked really good. Patriots team looked really good this past week. I get to play the Panthers. The Panthers are getting blown up by their, by, by everyone now. It seems so. Yeah, that's all I really got for that one. Not really too much time on that one. And then you have the Broncos and the Cowboys. What is going on with the Cowboys, man? You know, you know, it's one week. It's one week. You know, Dak's back. You know, come back from the injury. But still, 
they basically laid a goose egg on the Broncos because the Broncos pulled out their starters when it was twenty-seven nine with so much time left in the board. What you know, I you know it actually wasn't a lot at all. I was being sarcastic, but um, or just using an analogy, but that the but that Cowboys sixteen points came off of solely when the Broncos pulled their starters and had their second and third stringers in there. So this Cowboys guy, get, the, you know, this Cowboys team better get something figured out because that was a rough game yesterday. You know, teams have these games. I think the Cowboys will bounce back, so I think they're going to absolutely wallop the Atlanta Falcons. They should. Um, as we've seen this week, the Bills should have walloped the Jaguars. Um, the Ravens probably should have beaten the Vikings more. The Raiders should have beaten the you know, Giants more, so on and so on. It's NFL. It's full of should have, would have, could have. And then you have the Vikings and the Ravens, you know, Vikings bowling the lead, what else is new? That's that you know, that's kind of the Vikings thing now. You know, it went from being the Falcons to the Vikings now. And the Colts are on their way to being there as well, because they've been blowing a lot of a lot of leads as well. So a Vikings up fourteen nothing and this Ravens team comes crawling back in. They're pesky little buggers, man. Lamar Jackson, he's crazy. But this was another game where this Ravens team has had to come back from double digit point that de- you know deficits. There's something up there. You can't be doing that. You can't be going down like that. You know, when you're playing the Vikings, when you're playing teams like the Colts that aren't the greatest, y- you could come back versus them with the offensive power you have and stuff, with the defense you have. But when you play a team like the Cardinals, like the Packers with Aaron Rodgers, like the Rams. You can't rely on coming back like that. You can't. You can't do that. Because when you're down, those teams aren't going to stop. They're going to keep going, and they could keep going. A team like the Vikings, once they're up, they struggle to keep going. They struggle to keep their foot in the gas. They just stop. They just try to end the game quick. They try to just keep the lead until the end. And that's how you lose games. On the Vikings end. But the Ravens, they better not be keep going down like this. You know, if if they keep going down like this, it's going to, you know, like three overtime wins so far. You know, this Ravens team has been sh- not struggling, but, they're sh- but they are struggling early. And they need to get that figured out. So, this Ravens team has got to get that together. Nonetheless, great comeback win in overtime. Great thriller win. Great game. Move on to next week. See what you do next week. I didn't really look at many of the games next week, so I don't know who they're playing, but I'll I'll do my predictions. When you have the Houston Texans dropping one to the Miami Dolphins with Tyrod Taylor back, you know, we saw the Dolphins team is, you know, not great, but they're a decent team, you know. You know, the defense is decent. But, you know, it was, you know, Houston, Dolphins, kind of a basement game. You know, two teams struggling to get one win. Dolphins didn't win since week one, since beating the New England Patriots. And, you know, Texans just, you know, they they are what we expected them to be. So, y'all let me know what y'all think about that. You know, the Dolphins and the Texans game, you know, it, it is what it is. Tua had a in game. Mike Kaziki with the one handy catches though. That dude can catch. He just gotta find some consistency. You know, Tyrod Taylor struggled through a few through a few picks. Not really too much to talk about here. Two basement teams. Then you have the Chargers and the Eagles. Man, what a game. Jalen Hurts has been getting better week week after week. He's been pretty good. You know, he's been getting better. Yeah, I don't think he's a problem. You know, he's been making some really tight throws, really tight window throws at Devontae Smith or whatever it is, you know. Hurts has, de- Hurts has been decent. And then you have the Chargers on the other side who have been in a skid. Almost dropped one to the Eagles. I think they didn't because the Chiefs team is on two game winning streak. I know they're not impressive winning two you know, I know they're not two impressive games. Unless they're two wins, and that is all that matters. That's gonna boost. That's gonna boost that confidence. That's gonna get them a little pumped up. That's gonna get them going a little bit. I think. 
So this Chiefs team is slowly but surely crawling their way back into it. Don't count them out. So this Chargers and the Raiders team, they have to keep the foot in the pedal. Like I've been saying this whole while, the Chiefs can turn on at any moment, at any moment, and they have won two in a row. Granted, they weren't pretty. They won two in a row. And the Chargers, you know, they've been kind of struggling, but, you know, pretty good game versus the Eagles. You know, the Eagles are a way more talented team than people give them credit for. I think they're a very good team, but the Chargers just the better team today in the game-ending field goal. It was a good game. It was a good game. I enjoyed it. I, I thought it was pretty good. So the Chargers come on top there, 27-24. And then you have the Green Bay Packers at the Kansas City Chiefs. Jordan Love is, you know, he, you know, having all that time sitting and learning, you know, and then have, you know, kind of sucks, you know, he shouldn't have done that. Well, well, that, well, that's not the explanation to use, you know, he's should have been better for all that time sitting behind Aaron, learning the system. He should know what's going on. He should know how to be able to run the offense just fine. He didn't show much. He didn't show much versus a very, very crappy. Chiefs defense. And then you have the Kansas City Chiefs, you know, just scoring 13 points. Chiefs offense is still very sloppy, but they have won two games in a row. And granted, it was the Aaron Rodgers list Green Bay Packers and the New York Football Giants. You know, two teams that aren't very good. You know, Packers without Rodgers, not very good. The Giants, not very good. But, you know, the Giants have been making some noise the last two games. They're on a two-game win streak as well. Or no, they're not because they, no, they just lost the Chiefs. So what am I thinking? But the Giants were more talented, talented than people think was what I'm trying to get at. So the Chiefs and the Packers, what a sloppy game. What a sloppy game. But Chiefs are in two in a row now. Don't blink. Don't look back. Don't count them out. No, it's not two very good teams like I've previously mentioned. But two in a row is two in a row. Mahomes and that team could could flip that switch any second now. It might be halfway there. And then you have the Arizona Cardinals and the San Francisco 49ers. Man. Man, with all those injuries. To Hopkins. To Murray. To Edmonds early on. This Cardinals team is looking very good. Cliff Kingsbury is a very, very good coach. All those back court, you know, all those backup guys, no, not a lot of your key starters in, and and you still beat a team that has given you fits in the past so many times, game after game, and you go out and you have a game like this. Cardinals sweep the Niners. It's big. I think the Niners are just about out of it. And the Cardinals are just about on top. No one's going to catch them right now. I, I mean, I don't know. But, yeah, the Cardinals are number one seed. Cliff Kingsbury has been a very good coach. No matter who, who was in there. You know, before this season, I did not think that this Cardinals team was going to be very good at all. And this Cardinals team has been very, very good, very well coached, very good quarterback. Kelly Murray has proved me wrong. This whole Cardinals team has proved me wrong. So, really good game by the Cardinals and the 49ers, man. They're just a mess. They're just a mess. Kyle Shanahan, get your team together down there. You're usually a much better coach than this. Disappointed in that. But it is what it is. You got next week always. Always next week. That's what the NFL is. Always next week. Can't dread on one loss too much. But I think the Niners are just about out of it here. So, that kind of sucks for them. But then you have the Titans. Really, really putting a beating on the Rams. The Titans defense was very good. The Titans offense was decent. This Titans team is so freaking good. It's so good. I get it. Matthew Savage had a bad game. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the Titans, you got to give credit to the Titans for making that happen. Matthew Stafford doesn't just have a bad day just because he's having a bad day. Titans are doing something to make that happen. Yeah, you know, we all we all have bad days for just some random reasons. This Titans defense is getting something figured out. I don't know what it is. That pass rush is absolutely insane. Kevin Byers is one of the best safeties in football right now, and it's not even close. 
corners again have figured out a little bit. So this Titans team is looking very good. And Mike Vrabel needs to start being put in that elite coaching category. He is an elite coach. He is a very good coach in my opinion. This Titans team is looking very good. You know, if they win two or three more games while Henry's out and then Henry comes back, healthy for playoffs, whoo, whoo, you better watch out. You better watch out. This Titans team is going to be scary. So, Rams, on the other hand, you know, they've had many games where they just haven't looked how we expected them to look. And maybe this is a game that catches up with them. You know, Matt, you know Matthew Stafford struggled. You know, every you know quarterbacks have bad games all the time. You know, but the Titans defense did something to make that happen. And then you have, and it's just crazy, just crazy. And then you have, you know, the Monday night matchup between the Bears and the Steelers. Steelers almost choked this game out. Steelers almost really let you know let this one get away from them. It would have been bad. You know, there would have been a lot, a lot of bad stuff going on over there. Fans will not have been happy, but yeah, the Steelers team is very good at playing football their way. Prehistoric offense, you know, you got old-fashioned running back. Offensive line is getting better every week. My receivers are decent. Pat Fryermuth has been amazing. Big Ben has been pretty good. He's been getting the job done. And then that Steelers defense is the story of that team. The Steelers defense is the reason why they're so damn good right now. Don't look back now. The Steelers team is on a four-game win streak. I've been saying, I've been saying, watch the Steelers team. Watch out. Don't blink. Don't count them out. The elite coach, one of the best coaches in the National Football League right now. Very good. Very, very good Steelers team. Very well coached. Getting better every week. Najee Harris getting better every week. So, Bears on the other hand. Jeez, man. Like, you know, you know, yeah, Justin Fields, you know, has looked decent. You know, not bad. But then, you know, there's one thing I'm going to point out. You see how long the Steelers have had Pat Fryer in with what? Nine games, eight games. Eight games take away the bye week. So, they've already used Pat Fryermuth so much better than the than the Bears had have with Cole Komet. It goes to show what the difference in coaching does for your team. Putting those players in the best position possible to do the best they can for the team and, and helping that team win. And they've done that. The Steelers did that. And they've been doing that with everyone, not just Pat Fryermuth. The Bears haven't done that. Everything's off script. Everything's uh this, that. There's always some kind of issue. Steelers, yeah, there's issues. But they don't last so long. They get solved over a while, you know, after a while. So that's all I got for you guys today. You know, that's my NFL Week 9 recap. Try not to take too long, but, you know, I want to give, you know, thoughts on each game, my honest thoughts, what I thought. You know, I didn't want to see you guys on what I thought. You know, I want to give it. I wanted to give it to y'all 100% what I thought, and I did. I did. So what a freaking week. What a week. A lot of upsets. You know, you know, Lamar Jackson always coming back. No Aaron Rodgers this week. The Cardinals without half, you know, you know, half their playmakers absolutely kill the Niners. Broncos, you know, upset the Cowboys. I, I think I raised the Jags. And then the Browns absolutely put a walloping on the Cowboys. And then, you know, the upset with the Giants over the Raiders. So, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you for tuning in to the JDW Sports Talk Show, where everyone's welcome. I hope you enjoyed this video. And, you know, I hope you continue to watch some of my videos and stay. You know, I hope you enjoy the show. So that's going to be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.